Yeah. All right. So, you know, I have to um, apologize uh, because my uh, my research colleagues have seen these slides already. But I guess we have lots of people coming from uh, who are country representative coming from ministries or governments, and so they probably haven't seen it. So I give a kind of a basic uh, overview of what the Estonian Biobank is and uh, how we are, what kind of data we are collecting there. So basically, the Estonian Biobank really has been now in process more than 20 years, and first sample came to, uh, 2002. So it's. Uh, it's a really long time, and when I started, I couldn't really think that it takes like 20 years just to get somewhere. But uh, but this is a life, you know. And what we are really having, I guess we have pretty good phenotypes. And of course, always, uh, if you just dive in and start using it, you always see that I should like to use this and that, but you can't collect everything. Because we also had a limited amount of money just to collect, and phenotyping is the most expensive one and um, compared to genotyping. So, but the important thing 20 years ago was that uh, we have a um, law and we have a Human Genes Research Act from 2000. And uh, of course, law gave us uh, just only three um, goals. Promote the development of genetic research, collect information on the health of Estonian population and genetic information concerning Estonian population, and use the results of genetic research in, to improve public health. So this, is what, this was new 20 years ago, because so far, most biobanks this time didn't uh, return anything. They were not for the uh, healthcare, and um, you know, they were poorly scientific and uh, run mostly by genetic epidemiologists or epidemiologists as such. So in our case, we and there was a question how we recruited them, you know, uh, the people. So recruitment was done in medical institutions and by medical professionals. That means uh, hospitals, that means uh, primary care providers, and also the genome center of Biobank itself actually was setting up the recruitment cabinets. But we had to recruit medical doctors and, and nurses to do the job. So in this way, everything what happened uh, it happened in genome center, I mean the sequencing, analysis, everything, medical system was just only uh, so far was just to collect the data but now we are going back to them trying to uh, say just to deliver the data to return the data which is medically important back to people who donated their sample and information and gave informed consent so there was a question about informed consent also informed consent was signed before uh, people really started to fill the questionnaire or donate the blood sample. And um, now the first 50,000 people were recruited so that questionnaire was also filled in medical, uh, by medical uh, worker. And, but now last 150,000, they are doing it over the internet by themselves. We asked only directly from them only five questions. So if you want to get the big numbers, then you have to compromise somewhere. So how this looks like the biobank? It looks so that um, this colored means what we have in biobank in different age groups and, uh, and female and male. And the gray is what the proportion is in the population. What it shows that we have overrepresentation in biobank of a uh, fertile age woman. And uh, we have always, all age groups are less represented from males. Old ladies uh, were not so eager to come. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, we also probably gave out a little bit um, wrong message because we call them gene donors. But, you know, everybody knows what a blood donor is that usually you have to be healthy and, and nice in order to be admitted as a, a blood donor. But in our case, we were too late to tell that more diseases you have, the better, but uh, finally they still came. Okay, okay. next uh, next question was always how Estonia, and this was what Andre was asking, how we are related to other people. And um, more than 10 years ago, we had the same questions from, uh, from different companies and colleagues that look, if you do something in Estonia, which is a small country far away, so it doesn't matter. But you know, it does. If you just take all this, um, you know, uh, Estonia or uh, North 
best Russians, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, we are all in the same. You know, the Finns are over here, and you know, Kusama, which is a well known isolated, is over here. Between us is a sea, and sometimes it's covered with ice, sometimes not. So it was not so easy to uh, to uh, to see your uh, to, I would say partner. So it, it is, uh, I say it's uh, Alps in here or sea in here, it makes difference. And so it's uh, Europe is mostly here and Southern Italy is over here. So it's, uh, but if you just put into the same map, uh, like uh, people from Africa or Asia, so is there, uh, Europe is still like more or less like one spot. So we are different if you just zoom in, but we are similar, quite similar if you just use a global, uh, uh, global approach. So, but you know, everybody knows that, uh, okay, phenotypes are important. So we, by law, we have access to, and we have informed consent, which allows us to go to different databases and ask uh, data on gene donors, and we are collecting all this data in the biobank. So we have a pretty good um, overview, and we do it longitudinally, we get the annual updates. So. Uh, and I show you in a few minutes, you can see what we have. We have ICD-10 ICD based diagnosis, we have billing information, we have clinical lab data. And if you just uh, uh, zoom in, we have also the prescription drugs. So here is one fellow, one male born just uh, 1944. And, and in this moment, sometimes in late 2004, he decided to join the biobank. So, but we had also the previous info, the pre-existing info available, which we could, because doctors had it. And now we have uh, additional info which really came during the follow-up period. So this is, we have um, disease trajectories on all these uh, people uh, from basically from birth to death. And, um, and this is very useful. He would just uh, have a, big data ability to analyze the big data and events long time, but longitudinally what happens. So omics profiling. So we already mentioned that we have about 3000 people sequenced deeply. We have 2,500 exomes. And uh, the exome sequencing um, was also important because, um, because we really, we did sequence we didn't sequence in house these ones because the large projects we outsourced, but genotyping is all in house. We do the genotyping in house. And there we do some other stuff. You see mRNA sequencing, RNA sequencing, metabolomics, NMR. Now we have signed a contract with Finnish company to, to do NMR spectra for the rest of the biobank. And hopefully in next uh, year or year and a half, we will get it. And uh, now the, now the thing is that this uh, personal medicine, you know, it's a complex thing because everybody has his own definition, but, but in, in the one million genome projects, we have rare disease work group, we have a cancer work group, and we have a, a common disease and pharmacogenomics work group. So with cancer work group, we, we decided so that we are doing mostly, we are doing germline cancer. So this is a variant you are born with but uh, they are doing um, everything else and, and including, uh, they are doing cancer in general. So this is, um, I'm going to talk mostly about the common disease and tomorrow's talk. We had two projects going on last uh, several years. One was an Estonian uh, Geom Center, which is a kind of feedback initiative and it was poorly researched and the other one was uh, so-called RITA projects. Yeah, you will hear tomorrow about RITA project very closely. But, but this was just to see how it works and what people like and uh, how to really mm, transmit the data. And Lise will literally will talk tomorrow very, uh, you know, in depth, data, how it works, and what people think about it. So now next slide is, is here. So basically the vision was that 
we, we seek a certain, and this is also what I'm proposing now to Europe in uh, one million genome projects that we just seek a certain amount of people in order to get that reference database for imputation. And you don't need to have a very deep phenotypes on these people because this is just only imputation purposes. You get the variants to get, the, you have to cover your population to capture maximum genetic heterogeneity from your population. And then genotypes, everybody else, and for them, you have to have a very good genotypes in order to implement uh, the polygenic risk score or whatever you have to do your research, you need a good genotypes. And then, uh, you know, you say SNP arrays, like uh, we're telling. So, and then the imputed SNPs and PRS and pharmacogenomics you can use already for prevention. I call it now, and there is already you know, pretty uh, good term, personalized prevention, even uh, Horizon Europe as a new course coming out probably this the next week, as there is a course called personalized prevention. So in Estonia government gave us 50 euros per individual to recruit, to, to acquire health data, to genotype, put everything through QC. And uh, in this way, we did 150,000 in two years. Um, you know, and, and this is, I would call personal scale prevention. So now the question was also, how can we really do it? And this is what public think about it. So this is say, almost 75% uh, are supporting what we're doing. And, uh, but you know, the key is we have been doing it for 20 years. It, it's long time. So the key is we have to go out and talk and talk to in TV and write in newspaper and go to schools and go to workplaces and give a lectures and use every um, you know, media what you want, even in order to get into the real people. Uh, you know, we also have a TV show called uh, kind of soap opera, Un 13 or something, you know, it goes on every weekend or something, I don't know how many long, uh, yes, already. We managed to put into this episode, into this soap opera, somebody went to see the doctor and they discussed and so one not joins the biobank and so they went through the procedure. You know, this is this, you have to use all means and all techniques and, and uh, all media what you can get because people are um, reading different or listening to different things. Young people don't see, uh, read the newspapers anymore. They don't watch the uh, daily news. They have their own uh, channels and you have to be in this new channel, social media also in present. So this is what this, it takes and, but you can't, Trust them. You have to go step by step because you see, uh, you see it every day how good vaccines uh, people don't believe it because they don't know, and we had no time to explain that they are good ones. They are really doing a good job, and they were not developed in last three weeks. They were developed already last 15, 20 years, and now finally got really application. But this is just too complex. So uh, I'm. Okay, there's of course uh, issues. So at long time, hospital directors and executives were really um, kind of suspicious because they see that prevention takes too much money. If you just look into the budgets, prevention takes about 1% of, uh, you know, plus minus. And it matter it whether it's in US or Estonia or some other countries, it's around 1% goes for prevention. So it's, uh, it's not enough. Uh, if we just can use, uh, you don't have to use it like double digit. If you just increase it a little bit, you can do uh, lots of things in this genomic medicine, what is necessary to be done. You know, if you just think that it probably gets down to 200 or even less to seek as a whole genome, and it is 50 euros per, um, per individual just to get everything uh, from array. And you have to do it once in your lifetime and you have to, you can use it for all surrounding diseases and pharmacogenomics. So that is, uh, this is real, very economical approach. And, uh, but you know, it has to get to the, to the um, uh, level that uh, most people really can 
get it and can understand that what is what do we get in return if we do this investment because it's long time prevention is not happening tomorrow you know, you are not getting tested today or is today and you get disease tomorrow M might take 15 years so it's more like planting a tree in your, your garden if you want to see a nice tree plant it today and wait 40 years when you see it so it's the uh, same thing here but you have to start one day what is also important now in this new media uh, environment we are putting patients into the pedestal you know empower patient the patient owns the data they can decide who's going to see it but of course you know again you know people are different and that's why we have 75 percent of people who are supporting us but uh, there are 20 percent who are telling look i have to wait and see what's gonna happen and there are always people who are against it and there are always people who never heard it whether you go a million times into the media but they still say that look i never heard what's the bar bank is and so it's uh, it's um, and and it's not like you do it one time you have to do it all the time so it's uh, ethical issues long yeah, of course so we are discussing it all the time whether you have to know or you it's right not to know and you can you know whatever you you have right not to vaccinate you have the right not to know you have right not to do anything but but society has to treat you because now everyone should be kept alive and nobody is left behind so we have to balance these uh, expectations and you know what we can do but if people don't understand the technology they don't take it they don't like it and they don't accept it so we have to do it uh, so that all different uh, population uh, groups and strata will get it and that means different messages for different groups of course big data cloud gdpr all this data look and sharing this is all important but it looks so that uh, without uh, data sharing that means you don't have to put data into one place but actually in genetics we are very much uh, dependent to know what's the variant frequencies otherwise especially in rare disease you can't do much and um, you know it's um, again we have to do more more science more research because even the prs today you you can't give it uh, really just one number it still has a confidence interval it's it is good for stratification but today you can't say that your uh, prs is uh, 87 percent or something it has 87 plus minus certain percentage and this has to be found out and more you know about disease more you know heritability is not uh, genetics describes uh, variation for of disease or phenotype certain proportion now and you know at the beginning it was few percent now in height probably it's a 80 percent already but i remember when it was 20 percent few years ago but you need a million uh, people up and more into chiva study in order to get this 80 percent and height is very complex uh, phenotype so we have to do more and you know if you look diseases people have uh, done more chiva studies on certain diseases and less chiva studies in in uh, some other diseases which are not really killing you so fast but uh, basically uh, still influencing the lifestyle not lifestyle but life quality of life very much and so you have to move very smartly you have to make step by step and uh, you have to choose very carefully what she was to use uh, what uh, reference database to use and that's why you know the plan just to generate the european reference database so called gene of europe is very crucial because it would work across the europe and um, it would be really kind of a basis of the everything we want to do in um, in uh, genomic medicine it's uh, you still have to have a reference of Europe and now like we discussed earlier we have it's not the all in Europe we have different uh, uh, population groups coming from non-European countries and we also have to somehow uh, give the same quality of medical care to them so that means we have to also analyze genomic uh, variations across the Mediterranean countries Middle East and so as a as a 
countries which are traditionally not European countries, but people are living here. So this is the kind of next challenge, but we have to start somewhere and move on as far as we can and as fast as we can, but it all takes time. Science is, uh, is especially the medical science is very conservative. You have to be really sure, you know, if we are going to do the next step. So move carefully, make a steps, and you always have to be on the uh, thick, not a thin one. So my, okay, here. I conclusion, I would say that, of course, the prospective, large scale prospective power banks are very crucial. And we have, uh, happily, we have uh, lots of these power banks in Europe, uh, in Scandinavia, in Holland, in Germany, and many other countries. And, but uh, my vision is that in future, you know, the healthcare system itself becomes as a, as a biobank because we are collecting information electronically. We are using genomic data and, and we are learning from treatment results. You know, you are, you are treating someone with this drug and you see that she or he is getting better. You know, it can be recorded in the system. That means with this, not only child health, but other lifestyle information, this drug helps, but some other drug didn't. And, and so you have to collect the information. It gets a cycle like, um, like uh, Jacques Villa was mentioning, you have to have a cycle. And you know, the power banks are test bed just to have to do more research, you know, epigenomics, you know, uh, metabolomics, whatever. But uh, everyday medicine has to learn more. They are not learning so far. So far as the learning was on the head of the family physician. When he or she had a, now, 50 years of practice, they collected lots of information in their, um, their mind. And I remember early days of human genetics. So how it come all these rare diseases? Because some country doctor remembered that there was a case in family, you know, there was a six fingers in somebody, you know, six fingers, nice thing. But 25 years later, next patient come to him again six fingers then he was thinking look i have a friend in medical school probably this is something which is genetics and you know this is how it works but now we have to use the electronic databases to the same in large scale on the population scale and this is how medicine can advance much faster and and we can uh, turn it from the art uh, more into the science so this is my last message so I show you last slide, I guess, and and this is a genome center team. You see all young people, and they are all younger, twenty years at least, or twenty five years younger than me. So I'm really happy that uh, this idea has been uh, taken forward with young people, and you know lots of collaboration in across the country, starting from the government and uh, ending up with. Uh, people who, 200,000 people who joined the biobank and really supporting what we are doing. So thank you very much.